It's G for I. We got you. Subscribe to our channel. Hello folks, welcome to ROHCSA exam prep by GFRI. On this section, we are focusing on the objectives of containerization. And on this video, we will be looking at persistent storage with containerization. Before we start, please like, subscribe and hit on the notification bell so you will be notified each time we send out a new video and also grow this channel together and uh, do more fun stuff we take. All right. Persistent storage with containerization. What is persistent storage? So persistent storage is any data storage device that retains data after power to the device is shut off. In other words, we're saying that persistent storage with containerization can be termed as a non-volatile storage because in their nature, containers are volatile. Which means if you create a container and create data in that container, when that container is destroyed, the data and everything that was running under that container is destroyed, as seen right here on the board. So let me go to my drawing. Let's assume that you have been asked to bring up Facebook's uh, web server where users will be able to log in, store their credentials, uh, store their pictures and videos and uh, you've been asked to run that as a container right so no problem you go ahead and create your container and uh, what do you do you put the content to be accessed for facebook in var wwhtml right here and the database right in a directory right here you put it here for people to access so something happens you have to take down you have to remove this container and recreate it back oh boy this is such a bad design because now as you remove this container all the data is lost that's why we say containers are volatile all the data will be lost after you remove the container so uh, in order to remedy this we mount what, a directory in the container host that is permanent or that is persistent right directories are persistent from the container host we mount it to the directory in the container so much so that if you take out the container the data that is constantly being stored that is constantly being stored on the mounted directory in the container host right here in the mounted directory in the container host will stay if i spin up now a new container for facebook and what i'll just need to do is i'll just need to mount back right mount back the directory out which is the directory in the container host with the directory in the container and i'll still have the same content and thereby saving content of customers enough of drawings let's see that in practical mode okay this is our server right here and if we do a portman info we have no containers uh we have registries right here i think uh, we have red hat dot access which is our re registry let's log in you can log in with any name portman login login any name i can call it youtube or any name any password will work all right so i'm logging now into registry.redhat.access.com i clear my screen then i do a portman search httpd all right let's copy one right here which i copy registry.access.redhat httpd rail 7 all right then I clear my screen and I do a portman run dash d dash dash name. Let's call it web one. And I put the name of the registry right here. 
I do a portman ps. I have my container running already as web one, which is right here. That's good. Portman ps dash a. Portman. Let me remove the other container that is running. Portman rm, which is remove dash f because it's running web server one portman ps all right clear we have only one container now running so we just run the container without mounting any directory right so right now if i do a portman execute just interactive i get uh the name of the container is web one and uh, I get a bash shell into the container. Then I cd to slash var www html right here. I echo this is my web server. This is my web server, right? This is my web server, and I redirect it to index dot html I list that's my file now if I do a call localhost from the container right in I am in the container 8080 because the container is running on 8080 you see I have my web content right let me exit the container right here I didn't do pop port mapping so uh, right now my container is running and what happens is now i have to delete my comp my container and create it back so i do a portman uh, remove dash f let me say let me stop it portman stop uh web one portman remove web one now, let me call my command and recreate the container, right? Web1, portman, ps. And if I go into my container again, and cd to slash var, slash var, www.html. I list, you see, there's nothing inside. So the container I deleted went with all the content. I lost the content of that container and if that content is for users it will be terrible for the company so let's exit and do it the right way and mount a persistent storage now if I make a directory web underscore content right here then I cd into web underscore content remember I'm in my home directory a vi into index dot html in here around this is web server 2 with persistent persistent storage I save and create then I create my container again but this time around I put a dash V which will help me mount slash home remember the full path is very important always put the full path James then web one content I am mapping it to slash var www html of the container then i use the dash z for se linux else se linux will yell at us that we do not have uh we can't access this directory or we do not have access to the directory now if i run it right now okay the container 
the name is already in use all right great web one is already in use portman ps okay web one is still running right there let me run web two i call it i change the name to web two web two do a portman ps web 2 is running and now on web 2 we did map this directory we did mount slash home james web content on var www.html in the container with a dash z now if we get uh, a portman exec that's a bash shell into this container right here and cd to slash var ww html and list you see i did not create this right it's coming from the mounted directory on the container host that we created which is slash web so we created an index file here here and now when we log in they are linked now together we are able to see the same file in the container so if I curl localhost but 80 80 we see our content this is web server 2 with persistent storage now if I exit from the container and do a portman remove dash f um, web 2 web 2 is gone now let me create web 3 with the same mounting points and map the same mounting point and mount uh, web amount slash var sorry amount home james web content to slash var www.html so we just deleted or removed the container but you will see that our content will still be here when we spin a new container it will use the same content so then i do a portman ps to make sure it's running all right it's running web3 is running then i get uh, a bash shell into web3 web3 and cd to slash var ww html list and it's there i do a curl localhost on port 8080 and our content is still there so folks this is how you mount you mount uh, a container directory old container storage persistent so folks this is how you mount container storage persistently you create the storage directory in the container host and mount it to the expected directory in the container and uh, it's done all right guys thank you subscribe See you on the next video, which we will be doing, creating systemd service for containers. Please make sure you check out that video. Thank you.